Yeah, no, and it's I'm very thinking... similar to that because if we have the track holes and we are just capturing all the points in the torus on, in this toroidal structure, we have where the information, right? Because it's fractal at the same time. So that's why we were visualizing these mandalas opening up with all the data points that we were missing because there was there were not a structure to capture all these uh, mm -hmm. rotational points of view which are embedded in the different minds which are in the archetypes. So it's like all like weaving together really nicely. So, so basically, we have a rough idea of okay, there are these archetypes. You know, Sator, you you made a four, I think, and they resonate with another source that let you have to create for the Omega creation. <laughs> the 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 uh, what is it called again? This PhD work of the, this amazing the woman. Roles yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, PhD. So, so, Exactly, like having this connection already, it's uh, again some resonance uh, we see there. So we have potential types, but then also we might see through curations and what people share actually, actual types of people hanging around mm -hmm. <laughs> token engineering. So that discovery of like who are the people who are curating. So what should we ask? for from the curator or during the curation even you know asking questions is already boxing in my view always like how could we let that emerge like if we ask them for for some keywords or what could we do such that the curator gives provides information that will help us him or her or the group of the curation but also people who are going to use the consciousness library to see what type of mindset is this coming from this this curation i would say like the first info data point from any curator has to come from their highest point of experience or what energizes them from the very beginning like it's like the first uh, higher point for them to to share and it can be like a music uh, bit connected to this space. It can be like the uh, NFTs, the mandalas, where say, yeah, we need to provide like a container, but it's the highest experience mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You can hear with your opening. And that's I like... Start. An Go ahead. Yeah, another concept that I like is like art. It's, it has like an order. It's first in expansion of consciousness, then it became science, and then it became art. I think it's about that, you know, how, how can I go into the exploration of consciousness and be able to download that information? So, yeah, I need to to understand uh, different aspects on mm -hmm. how to translate some mm -hmm. sometimes these uh, very abstract information and translate and uh, put it in something beautiful <laughs> and be able to, to create something with it. So, yeah, I think... Yeah, what if we... To, to yeah, go like, ahead, Sator. To piggyback on that, on that point, it's like these are these these are consistent with these uh, emerging kind of like modes of what we the future of the NFT mandala, and it's a, it's about like that process too of like the the unplugged state, which is like the the whole possibilities you know this this cloud of possibilities, and then like the what you do um on yourself your own work whether um you know the inner work or even what you're researching and how that connects later when you become part of like the group or whatever when you engage with the whole of of the, the connection mm -hmm. in in what we're thinking about for the modes and so like this becomes like this exercise with your own self of like when you study and then like having that metabolism to to kind of like let it let it like uh, ferment a little bit and then when you when you come in together when we come together then we start seeing those new connections and like those connections what we're talking about are the blank spots of what Leti refers to of like you know both we give them the big picture of the flower and we start to color it in 
you know, with, with our with our personal stuff of what we talk about, what has been emerging in group, but then also too, these artworks <laughs> are kind of to help fill in these spaces to make it connect to where where this chart is is becomes like what the first image that I saw is Steph of these threads that are connecting the full flower of, of the yes, and that could be the connection. Uh, yeah. Like, uh -huh, sorry, like the, the, on the overlap. Yeah, they visualize the yoke. Yeah, that's uh, really uh, the idea of consilience. Like, the, yeah. the whole idea of this kind of like green rain is the whole joke in the matrix when you go through the mirror. So then you always have this <laughs> matrix and these guys reading this code. So I saw kind of like the consilience lines of things connecting in a kind of like weird rainforest where you have all these kind of threads of, from the trees <laughs> that you could so just cool. walk through them and like pick up the information wherever you needed it. And that, that's kind of the <laughs> idea of those things. But of course, it looks different on a screen. I saw them so late, uh, but that was such, you know, that, that's why I, I really am big fan or of having uh, this art and visualization and your interpretations of you know what we're trying to do here um it, it's just refreshing number one and number two it's uh, again it's it's like a mirror it gives you back um yeah that that that's a you know that those little messages are are really uh highly super valuable i, I just want to um just um grab something out of this so what if you know we commit uh, to um you know for the omega curation uh i did that uh, like i have three things out of vast you know really great stuff that helped me actually uh, get in uh, i said get into token engineering but then i said okay now i'm going to even focus it more it's token engineering token engineering crypto economics slash omega like we're creating for omega and that helped me actually then to focus on on the you know most interesting readings that I that really helped me to get a new perspective that I didn't have before or where I was struggling like where I had a blind spot uh, or, or, or not blind spot but where it was hazy I had no connections but all of a sudden there's this book I'm reading and it makes sense or it connects parts um, one second it connects parts that weren't connected before and to be honest, uh, like er everyone who's been in the trenches in token engineering, com uh, token engineering and crypto economics, we know we have to have a beginner's mind <laughs> because I said like this is such a, a vast uh, and and such a dynamic space, and the systems that uh, are being built out are highly dynamic. That some people. Uh, are even uh, on on the more AI uh, side of it, you know. Uh, token engineers uh, don't even start. <laughs> We're gonna train algorithms <laughs> <laughs> because that's the only way. Uh, and actually, that was also my my um, my mental model at Siemens and so on. Data driven optimization is far better than you know some engineers coming with their models. But then I didn't have the philosophy side at all, <laughs> let alone art, uh, like the creative. Like I, I do have a creative side, but it was uh, sufficiently and successfully educated into the depths that I'm now uh, exploring. <laughs> uh, do you mean so, your children? But, <laughs> yeah, like she, Ada is absolutely free <laughs> to, to go for, but I'm also, uh, you know, how do you call it? Uh, letting, letting my child out, my inner